Hello my friend, it is time for us to do a little bit of game dev again. Last time we stopped at, well, this. It kind of works, but it doesn't have to be this ugly, that's for sure. But I am no 3D artist, so in this video I'm going to dive deep into the asset store and find all the pretty gems that are just waiting to be put into my game. The challenge here. The challenge for the final product to still look the way I imagined it, nice and consistent. And not as something stitched from bits and pieces of the asset store like this sweet lady. Then I'll also need to add more mechanics like this tiny little floating tile and after that we'll talk about baking. Unfortunately not this one, the light baking. So let's get right into it. First of all, we need models. Nope, not this. We need models of trees and grass and other environmental stuff. Also, some flying islands. I do plan to keep it a low poly for both optimization and some cohesive looks. So there should be no problem here except that the half of the asset store are just these low poly trees and bushes. So what do I do? I pick all of them and then import it all into my project. There we go. The drinking cap flavor. And here you go, flavor. You're drinking the juice. You're drinking flavor. Oh no, flavor. Oh, flavor. Later I've spent a good few days trying to get this whole thing together, experimenting with different tree types and flowers and trying to make some weird, very scaled rocks look like a floating isle. Then I was just sitting there playing with a shader I found, which gives some crazy possibilities for modification. I was so, so happy considering my plans to make different biomes with distinct color palettes. But then I tried to migrate to URP, and everything fell apart, especially that fancy schmancy shader. Ah, these sweet toxic colors. I could not find the reason why I need URP for this specific project and also had some very personal attachments to the shader, so git reset had hard, I guess. After that, of course, the project required some cleanup and then I also made prefabs for different types of trees, flowers, rocks and whole island prefabs so I could reuse them later for other levels. Another thing that I was very eager to do was replacing this ugly as hell skybox with these beautiful clouds. So all in all, visual changes ended up looking like this. And yeah, we even got some grass to touch. Models are all great and stuff, but we can't really look at this world as something really existing if it's this static. So, to start I made a script that would move these islands up and down as if they were floating in the sky. And I lost quite a few of them in the process. We will remember you and your contribution to this great cause island 27.1. And these are supposed to be the rune stones that keep those islands afloat. Not really doing anything, just there for the lore reasons, I guess. Okay, let's be honest, I just like the model, looks magic enough. Another thing, this flower popping out of nowhere is strange. So I added a script to it as well, just a small one changing scale over time. But it already looks better, like it's actually growing. So it can become an adult, get two jobs, one of which they don't even get paid for, not projecting or anything. Anyway, visual changes are great, but to make this game more playable, we need more code. Much more code. And with this, I introduce to you the inevitable platformer attribute, the bane of all mobile players, the thing we've all been waiting for, the moving tile. Yeah, it's just moving like that. That's it. But you can jump on it and float far, far away, where no deadlines can find you. But then return back because that's how the style is supposed to work. 
and you can also jump on any tile you want. Unless it's diagonal. Don't do diagonal jumps, we don't like this. The last thing, I also made a mechanism to add more levels easier and added a few. You may have noticed this brilliant washed out colors on the whole scene which leads us to the next point. When you make anything for mobile, it is important to remember this single thing. Your software is going to be launched on a potato. Be prepared. So, first of all, after I added post-processing and a lot of other visual improvements, I noticed something. I noticed that the game is impossible to play. So I removed post-processing and decided never to look at it again. But that's not the only thing. Another one was to get rid of most real-time lighting. So how do you do that? You bake it into special light map files. So if your light is static, our little phone potato doesn't have to think about how to show it. Because it already has this light map. Amazing, right? But there is one problem. As soon as I run the process to create light maps, it gives me this time estimate. 20 days for a single simple scene. So I went on to configure the settings and make it easier for my computer. And it helped, but I still had to wait for the whole night. And sometimes that was not enough. As time went by and I thought that I will have to somehow test this thing on iOS, and later upload it to App Store, I had to face the idea that I needed a more powerful machine, something that could build for iOS, and something that could last for a day without electricity. So, yeah, obviously I needed a MacBook, so I bought one. As I got to baking the light on my brand new Mac, I found out they do not support baking on a silicon GPU. Yeah, I had to bake it on a CPU and it was just as bad if not worse than on my Windows machine. Luckily, the new beta version had support for that, but that very same version crashed like 10 times a day, especially at light map baking. But at this point it started to take like half an hour for a single scene, which was completely acceptable. And also, I didn't have to wait for editor launch for 5 minutes or so, so it was bearable. The fun thing, when you're baking the light and you touch your laptop, you kind of understand why they called it baking. Won't have to pay so much for heating in winter. And yeah, the washed out colors are because of the light maps not present for those scenes at that time, so the light was not really there. And when there is no light, there are no shadows either. The scene with baked light would look like this. With this dev look, the game started to look much more pleasant and also became more optimized. I also tried to discuss some optimization issues, because having to adapt, optimize your resources and pick the right hardware are kind of the things we developers have to face as well. And then of course the game got more mechanics and movement going on. So, a huge piece of this dev look was about the things you're not going to notice, but you will notice if they are not there. In the next one, we will focus on more visible updates, new types of tiles and mechanics, which means more interesting level design, and turning the old placeholder UI into something more pleasant. So, if you managed to stay up to this point, leave a like and subscribe to see the next one. Bye!